Welcome back. Well, we've got uh, comments coming through from Henry here. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, let me look for this other one. He did suggest initially because we're talking about holding states accountable. And then he says, that's uh, a berry, actually. He says, if the FG fails, the states are not using funds judiciously. What is the EFCC doing? Are they not supposed to be investigated? So this raises some more questions about because there are agencies out there yep. that are supposed to do, do all of these. They can't just wait on the citizenry alone mm -hmm. to do this. So if we've set up those agencies, now questions are for them. They have a role to play. Now you ask this question. You want EFCC to investigate a state and local government. Where do they start? It is the citizens that write the petition. It is the citizens that do the research and say, 250, for example, 250 million naira was allocated for renovation of schools. As far as we're concerned, the schools have not received that money. Here is the breakdown of what we've done. Here are pictures to show where each of those schools are. This is what the budget said. This is the facts on the ground. You present that to EFCC. This is the Commissioner for Education. This is the State Governor. The EFCC needs citizens to provide them, not just with petition, with petition with sufficient evidence. So that would enable them, of course they would do their investigation. That would enable them to do um, their investigation and possibly um, bring those who are responsible to account. Well, Olayemi says, we used to hear FG is not releasing funds, <laughs> but now, it looks as though the government or state governments are more corrupt because he says, look, more funds are made available to them, but yet they haven't seen commensurate development. Yeah, well, I mean, it's nothing new. The funds have always been released. It's not as if funds are released now. What the increase has come as a result of the excess crude oil account being shared um, with the oil revenue and VAT and um, revenue from customs. It's nothing new. You know, everyone really has to be on this, in on this, because what we do to ourselves, mm. if we don't ask those questions that we ought to, because if few people get in there and mass the wealth that is meant for the public to themselves, yep. these are the kind of challenges you have. Mm -hmm. some, at some point, who knows, it, it just might implode. Yep. Because now we have militia groups. Yep. And basically what they are all agitating for is tied to one thing, if I could say that, development. Exactly. And um, development needs money. Um, but it doesn't need money alone. Development needs human, human beings. And the level of our human development is, is quite low. Um, we really need a lot of work to change this military mindset we carry. And the military mindset still keeps us as a people who don't demand a lot of questions. When the government says we're spending 300 or 500 billion for 2014, We've got to really ask, okay, which sector gets the highest and why? We've got to really ask these serious questions. Not only do we ask the question when the budget has been read, at the end of the year, we've got to make government account for what they've spent. And I'm quite confident any state governor that has a town hall meeting, and the town hall meeting is filled with 5,000 to 10,000 citizens who've sent in questions and they have constantly hackling on government. You said you would do this. You said you would do that. At the town hall meeting, we want those answers. That government is bound to sit up. And uh, even citizens, because the state houses of assembly, yep. uh, they, they also feature here because in many cases, if not in all cases, I stand corrected. They, oh, what we hear from citizens there is they're more like rubber stamp. We haven't seen anyone stand up against any government in those states saying, listen, could you account for act for this uh, it doesn't matter if we're in the same mm. party we're interested in development for the people yes have we seen that happen or we need to see more of that if it hasn't we haven't seen it we haven't seen it um some states have been fortunate lagos and some of the states around the west have been fortunate many other states the house of assembly state house of assembly have no pressure on them so if you don't have any pressure on them you're a rubber stamp for the governor but yes. let's let's go back again and um, say that um, as we're asking for people to mount pressure on the National Assembly, we should also desire to ask questions at the state level and the local government level. It is also important to know that some of us may live outside of our states. Um, for example, a state like Lagos is a host to people from various parts of Nigeria. It doesn't exclude us from asking those questions from 
the local government councillor. For me, I think the, the, one of the biggest problems we have is this local government, the third tier, the one closest to the people in the rural areas. Um, in many areas, is the, the governance is non-existent. Are there. they getting the funds? Um, yes and no. Um, the, the, the not evidence, um, speculation does suggest that um, deductions come from the state government. government. Um, so state government would, uh, would justify that by saying we had spent money in those areas and we're deducting that. Um, some state government would be like, we install them and we could do what we want. But in, 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 a, in an ideal world, we can say they're getting funds. Uh, there are people who are saying local government should be autonomous. But autonomous in what sense? If the governor still has control over the election of people who are local government chairman and councillor, he still would have control there. But again, um, when you do have people asking questions, and I like to add a get, retreat, that when people begin to ask questions, they're participating in the political process. Okay. And that is where we will begin to see more people not just ask questions, but say, I too can participate in the process. Speaking about that participation, what role do you see elections play, the way we elect our leaders? Mm. How do you think that can change so many of all what we're talking about today? Um, as many who are watching know, I blog at bobwido.com. And for many months now, I've been talking about elections, that um, elections is just an occasion. There is a process that prepares one for the election. I've asked this question, is it e credible elections we're looking for? or credible candidates. We cannot seek for credible elections without credible candidates. It is important. And if government is talking about holding whole state and local government to account, I think what the federal government should seek to do is to encourage more citizens to get involved in political governance. And by that I mean we must begin to see more citizens participate in politics. Yeah, but it's credible uh, candidates not going to be predicated on credible elections? Um, the, you need the credible candidates to get a, um, to, of course, credible elections is essential, but you can have a credible elections and the candidates are, are not credible enough. Yeah, because I've heard people say, listen, if I put myself up there, I risk the success I've made from the private sector, for those yep. of them who are coming from there. So what they want to see is, look, if it's not credible, mm -hmm. and then I go there, and then they already selected someone who is going to be that person, and then I go there, I'm messed up. I can't play the same because yeah. we're not on the same page. And so who will build they just, the card? They just pull back. Who will build the card? At, at some point, um, citizens have to take the initiative. And I've always believed that when you begin to have more credible people participating in local party politics, we're not just talking and we have to change this mindset that when you say I'm going into politics, it means you're contesting for an office. Office is probably about 2% of the activities in political parties. I'm trying to link this to developments we've been talking about mm -hmm. because uh, this is about national security and we're looking at funds and how uh, some of these can help sort uh, the, the security situation. Uh, take, for instance, we all live in Lagos. Yep. You, you recall how Oshodi was before mm -hmm. now. Yep. Uh, you dare not go through Oshodi when it's even 6 o'clock or 6.30, yep. but today it's a beautiful place. And someone will say that has actually taken care of security situation in that part of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. So it is with so many of the bridges that they are beautifying under the bridges yep. of almost all the bridges we have. So I'm trying to link this to nation building mm -hmm. and development because these funds are actually something that we must talk about. Yes, if we... my state has been developed uh, rapidly as the funds come in, mm -hmm we're likely to see a reduction in some of these issues that yeah. has to do with insecurity in uh, different states or local governments. And you say people should start asking the questions. Away from questions, how can even the government act upon such revenue or funds that come to, to, to them? Because we haven't actually looked at the IGR now. Yep. <laughs> so let's be blind to that and face what we know that has been released from the federal government. How well can they activate these funds for us to see as a people? 
because now you've been talking about the people asking questions, but how can they help the people with such funds? I think um, it, it's, it's always quite difficult to expect something from a government that um, you've already concluded is not competent enough. And for many of us Nigerians, there may be maybe three or four or five governors that we think are competent enough, not to mention that because these governors, um, for many of the good ones, are not operating in parties with enough platform of Nigerians who really want development, it gets difficult. So for all that we desire, we want government to perform great. You want um, development. We've got to take a step back. We've got to put the foundations in place. We need more of us in political parties. We need proper internal democracies and parties. So when a credible person stands for election and gets into office, it is not only the people asking the question, it's the political party that is asking their, their representative the question. And we're not just saying political party as, now is our time to share contract, let's recoup what we've invested. But we're having political parties that are saying, we set this as a manifesto. How far are we going with it? Because we have to render account. So the quality of our political party enables government to do better by providing federal candidates for elections and for office, by holding their candidates in office to account, but also by joining with the citizens to hold proper and transparent town hall meetings where the real question are asked and the proper answers are provided, therefore achieving transparency. Do you ask questions of your state governor? I do. I ask questions of my state gov uh, governor, of my uh, um, representative in the Senate, of my representative in the House of Reps, and my uh, local government councillor. What kind of response do you get when you ask? It's been interesting. Um, the initial phase was um, no response whatsoever. You write a letter, it's not no response. You drop um, a letter. I must commend my House of Reps uh, representative. Um, he's done well to acknowledge the letter and engage in conversation. Um, so in that light, uh, we're making progress. Um, no response from my Senate rep. Um, no response from my uh, representative in the State House of Assembly. But I keep writing. That is a good All example. Right. Do you want to share his name? Um, <laughs> uh, everyone knows Dan Abia, representing Eket and uh, Senatorial District, a federal constituency in the House of Reps. But I really must put PDP this in before you leave. Uh, uh, and uh, it's a question saying that uh, well, what the minister didn't mention was that the states, as we speak, have recorded a 40% drop in FAC for almost a year. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the blame has also been shifted to the government uh, at the center that uh, the monies have been drastically reduced. It's a good point. But um, I would have preferred um, that state government, local government, and the citizenry have somewhere they can connect to say, we have projected this amount for the year, but this is how much we're receiving. As a result, this is what we intend to do with the revenue we have. So we're not just going ahead with the for example, 500 billion uh, narrow um, budget, and yet we're having 300 billion, and in that 300 billion, the security vote still remains the same. We want government to say, things like security vote will be cut down, and things like overseas travels and trainings will be cut down as a result of how much we're receiving. Right. So our projection is this, and this is how we want to take it forward. All right, Bobby Udo, thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Bobby Udo is a nation building evangelist. We'll be back after this to look at some comments coming from you as well. So join us again in a moment.